You know, I'm glad I studied the Bible. Because <laughs> it set me free from so many things. You know, there's so much in it that just gives you such a good feeling, warm inside. Let's you know that everything's going to be all right. I really am. I'm so thrilled that, you know, I had the chance and opportunity to read the Word and to have quality teaching, you know, that I could base my faith and foundation on. So that way, when I got older, you know, as I started going through these experiences in life, I could look to the Word of God and find truth. Because everywhere I looked, I saw fallacy and phoniness and, you know, Things like in politics today, or the economy, or in the world, or your corporations, you know, the phony stuff. Now, I happen to be able to have seen through it when I was young. Most people don't even get to that stage until they're older. Then they realize just what a facade a lot of business or people are. But they really don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I began to see through all that, you know, and began to realize... You could pick out who knew what they were doing because they didn't really pay much attention to everyone else. They just did their job, got it done, went home, did what they were supposed to do. You know, they enjoyed their life. They came in, did their job, got it done, and left. And you know, that's kind of kind of what God wants us to do. You know, he, he doesn't want us to be so consumed by, you know, religion and all these other things when the reality is, is that He has done everything for us. He has accomplished His purposes. It's all been written down. He's going to bring us to that place of realization that we can't do it ourselves. He will bring you to that. You can't do it yourself. You will discover that you cannot do it yourself. Because it's going to come to a place where you accept what the Bible has to say about you, which literally says you were born in sin, conceived in sin, and you'll die in sin. So you're a sinner. So we we got to cover that. You know that. Yeah, you know you know you know you're a sinner, right? Hopefully. I mean, come on. <laughs> Let's get real. Give you five minutes, you know, and by yourself or ten minutes or some other situation and put you in a circumstance, you'll sin. <laughs> Let's be real. Without God, it's all over. You're down for the count, you know. One, two, and three, you're out. Three strikes. You got it, baby. But the nice thing is, is that God also says because of His Spirit, we can resist sin. We can stop sinning. We can choose not to sin. We can choose to go a different direction. And I like that. You know, I like the fact that, yes, everyone's got an even playing field. And yes, I'm glad that I got some inside knowledge on every one of those little pooper scoopers, you know, that I see around the world. You know, pooper scoopers, people that pick up the poop for everybody else. Pastors, ministers, elders, deacons, you know, prayer warriors. You know, they're pooper scoopers. They have to pick up your poop and clean up your mess because of what you left behind. You know, they get all the flack from all that, you know attack stuff that you do, you know, when you were a child, you know, you were thinking that you had to attack this party or that party, and then the pooper scoopers had to come along and clean up your mess because you had just all over the place on all kinds of people, and they're trying to save those people, you know, and sadly, you know, you just decided to make a mess of everything, you know, so you just let it all out everywhere you went. You could always smell where you've been, and you were just kind of like one of the you know, people that you just don't want to be around because you kind of like can smell your theology, you know, kind of making a mess of things. But I kind of like, you know, how God has blessed the pooper scoopers, you know. He's allowed them to come back by, you know, kind of clean up the mess, you know, clean the toilets up, clean the toilet seat off, you know, make sure it's all nice and neat so the next time you come along, you'll be glad that there's pooper scoopers, you know, and that you'll give thanks to God for them. Not! <laughs> I know better. You are not going to think that. You don't sit down in a in a church, you know, and look at the toilet and say, Wow, praise the Lord, I wonder who cleaned that. And bless God for them. Do you? I'll bet you don't clean their toilets. Do you? Do you clean your own toilets? Ah, guess you're not a pooper scooper. You must be one of those pooper users, you know. That you just like to use everything and not serve people. You see... That's kind of what God wanted us to do from the beginning, is to be pooper scoopers. Because he knew that besides people that abuse and kind of leave their markings behind, you know, there's also people that are pooper scoopers that leave poop behind. Because they too have a problem with poop. Because they're leaving behind what they've done. 
and someone else needs to clean that mess up. So it's kind of like whenever you find some poop, you just clean it up. That's all. That's kind of what we're supposed to be doing, cleaning up each other's mess. Because wherever you go, wherever you've been, however you are, believe it or not, you left something behind. <laughs> it's true. Yes, you did. And so did I. So if you've seen where I've been, whoa, clean up my mess. Be a pooper scooper for me. But God knows who we are, and God knows what we are. God wants us to be more than we are, and so he changes us. And that's why Tozer brings us to the realization of knowing the fact of what we are, so that way we can come to a place of accepting how Jesus will develop us into the man of God we should become. Believe what God says he will do for us. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, Acts 3.19. True faith requires that we believe everything that God has said about himself. Okay, that's cool. But also that we believe everything he has said about us. Uh-oh, that's not cool. Until we believe that we are as bad as God says we are, we can never believe that he will do for us what he says he will do. Because you see, if you think that in you there goes any good thing, you're always going to be trying to fix it yourself, do it yourself, and make a mess of what you thought you were going to do to make it fix to the mess that you thought you were going to be able to do because you thought you were smart enough or wise enough or had enough knowledge to go do it without God. And guess what you did? Call in the pooper scoopers. He tried it again. He went and tried to fix something, and guess what happened? He made a mess. Yep, he was going without directions again, and he's lost, doesn't know his way around, so I guess we better send someone out to find him. Yep, he decided to go thrill-seeking, and guess what? He got thrilled, all right. He's dead. See what I mean? Hooper scoopers. God needs to kind of clean up your mess, you know, because in reality, who we are, more often than not, isn't really what we think we are. It never quite accepts the severity of God or the depravity of man. Stress, whoops. Okay, here it is. Right here is where popular religion breaks down. And this is why religion gets all messed up and psychology gets all messed up. Because both, and humanism and you know any other ism that you want to put in there, including goodism, when people think that you're good when you're not, because in reality God said no one's good and there is no good and people don't do good. But here's where religion fails. Because it never quite accepts the severity of God or the depravity of man. God is cut and dry. You're going to hell. That's it. There's no questions asked. No ifs, ands, or goes. You have a guaranteed, stamp, sealed, and approved ticket to hell. And you're right now trying to use it. Unless, unless, God has invalidated that ticket for some reason. Changed the destination. It stresses the goodness of God and man's misfortune. It makes sin a pardonable frailty and God is not too much concerned about it. He merely wants us to trust in his goodness. <clears throat> to believe this is to ground faith upon falsehood and build our eternal hope upon sand. In other words, poop. God has spoken. We are all under a solemn obligation to hear the affirmations of the Holy Spirit as he speaks to us. To manipulate the scriptures so as to make them excuse us or compliment us and console us to do despite to the written word of God and to reject the living word, that's what religion does at times and that's what people do when they manipulate it to say there is no hell and God would not condemn anyone to hell. Yes, he will and he does and he has. To believe savingly in Jesus Christ is to believe all he has said about himself and all that the prophets and apostles have said about him. Not just the sweet Jesus loves me, this I know for the Bible tells me so, but I've come to set man against his father and mother against the son and the members of his own household will be his enemies and I'll bring division, not peace. <laughs> A dreamy sentimental faith which ignores the judgments of God against us and listens to the affirmations of the soul is as deadly as cyanide. A faith which passively accepts all of the pleasant texts of the Bible while it overlooks or rejects the stern warnings and commandments of those same scriptures is not the faith in which Jesus and his apostles spoke. There's always this avenue of religion and religious expression that says, I want to believe in, and I'll give you a good one, Israel. I want to believe in the Israel that I think I know. 
Because, see, if I believe in the Israel, I think I know then, it's a land of biblical truths, and people are walking around with camels, and there's peace, and we're walking on the same footsteps that Jesus walked on. And never mind about the bombs blowing up, you know, and the fact that this is a tourist trap, and that this isn't where Jesus walked, but that it's actually 50 feet down below. And never mind that we're making money off the tourists, and we're getting saved three times a day. Never mind that we're using the Christian, you know, idealism in order to get money so that we could buy weapons, so that we could sell them plots of land that we're saying that we're planting for trees, or lately, maybe something else. And actually, we're buying guns and using it for something else. Hmm. Never mind that, you know, most of the organizations that raise money for Israel are using it so that they can do their own humanitarian aid and set up their own little kind of like, you know, living arrangements and never sharing the gospel of Jesus to anyone over in Israel because, after all, God will save them eventually. In the meantime, who cares if they go to hell? I don't know, but you know. That's kind of a religious idealism, you know, that's kind of like, they want to believe in the biblical Israel, but not the real Israel. You know, the Israel that has gay parades, you know, the Israel that has abortions, the Israel that is committing fornication, the Israel that is just like Sodom and Gomorrah today, you know, the Israel that goes to Sinai to party, the Israel that has drug addicts, the Israel that is not what you think it is, because you choose not to see Israel today. Oh, we don't talk about when Israel sank an American destroyer because, after all, it was an accident. Or was it? Israel admitted they did it on purpose. What happened to it? We didn't know about that. Oh, really? I guess you know what you're standing for. But the Bible says we should stand with Israel. No, the Bible says you should stand with the people. You should stand for those that God loves. You see, God didn't say to the Pharisee, Hey, I love you. I, I adore what you're doing with my people. I'm so glad that you're in charge because you now have crucified my son. I'm so happy that you are Israel. And now I can just exonerate you to the nth degree and make you the apple of my eye because you have crucified Jesus Christ, my son, for the sake of the nation. So I'll just go ahead and accept you. It's okay. Not. Because you see, God doesn't accept Israel as it is. Israel is getting ready to accept a false messiah. They're getting ready to turn their back on God because they've already turned their back on God. They've been walking against what God has said for over 2,000 years now. And they've been inventing all kinds of stuff that you don't want to know about. You know, like Hanukkah, how it's a made-up celebration of some supposed miracle that even Jews proved was false. That doesn't sound like giving God credit, you know, for being the real God, but it sounds like trying to make up a God in order to follow that God. So which God is Israel following today? None. You see, Israel is not what you think it is. And there's always religious ideas about, you know, how we think of ourselves more highly than we are. You know, oh, well, you know, my pastor would never do that. And then suddenly down the road, you go, huh, why did the church split? Well, you see, the pastor got caught, you know, with his hands in the cookie jar. Not my pastor. Well, I don't know whose pastor it was, but he got caught. Oh, wow, I thought I knew him better. Well, you do. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. God says, don't get the religious idea. Get the reality idea of everyone is a sinner, including Israel, including you, including me, including the pastor, including the minister, including every single human being. We are all depraved and God has judged us for that depravity. We fall into depravity regularly. That's why we need forgiveness. We need mercy. We need grace. That's why we don't operate according to sight, but we operate according to the faith in the Son of God and what He declared would be. When He spoke about Israel, He spoke of it in loving terms. He loved Jerusalem for the fact that the house of the Lord was there and that He would bless it. And as he blessed it, he said, And I will curse you for not accepting me in the day that you should have recognized me. And so he did. And so can you. You see, you don't curse the people. You pray for the peace of Jerusalem that Israel would recognize the Messiah. You pray for your neighbor that your neighbor would recognize Jesus. You pray for this nation we live in that the President of the United States would follow the 
teachings that he was given as a Christian so that he would become more born again of the spirit than he would of the flesh. Because as a fleshy Christian, we don't agree with his policies, but as a spiritual Christian, we might. You see, when somebody gets saved, you want to keep encouraging and helping them and picking up their poop because they're making a mess of things. And that's what happens when religion gets involved in supporting Israel. When religion gets involved in contradicting the President of the United States, which is what God said, don't do. When religion gets involved in politics and tries to make you pick one side or the other, and both sides are wrong. Excuse me, which side am I going to vote for? The lesser of two evils? I'm not voting for any evil. I'm sorry. Guess what? I'm a pooper scooper. I'll clean up their mess because I know they're making a mess. Look at the economy. Look at the people around us. Look at the way the system of the world is going. That's all we need to do is share Jesus and clean up the mess. Because that's what God said. You have a mess, I have a mess. You could help me with mine if you really want to be like Jesus. And I could help you with yours if you really want to be like Jesus. But you can't go out there and be religious in getting this extreme ideas about how good people are when they're not or how wonderful some nation is when it's apostate, or how wonderful America was a Christian nation when it was founded, which it wasn't, or how wonderful we believe Glenn Beck, which is a Mormon, and how wonderful we're going to vote for a presidential election between a Mormon and a Christian, because we call the Christian a Muslim, and we call the Mormon a Christian. I think people are doing what looks right in their own eyes, and I think we need to be pooper scoopers, because no offense to you, I think the world is in a mess. I don't think they know what they're doing at all. I think it's time we stuck to the basics. You know what the basics are. What are the basics? Jesus loves me, this I know. I don't think that's a scripture. Do you? I think it says, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. I think Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and they know me, and they will not follow the voice of another. I think Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I think Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I think we need to follow Jesus. Because, you know, every time I hear someone start to tell me about what's in the Old Testament, or what Paul said, or what's in Acts, or what's in... Peter said, or what's in Revelation, I never hear them talk about what Jesus said, especially when they're trying to contradict what Jesus said. Because you see, the Bible doesn't contradict itself. It's very easy to understand most of their arguments when you read it before whatever they're quoting, and you read after whatever they're quoting, and you recognize, hey, they're misquoting. Because that's the only way to make religion fit into this idealism that they have. But when you really want to clean up somebody's mess, you got to get your hands in it. You know, you got to get down and dirty. You got to literally live it. You know, you got to put your hands in that mess, scoop it up, put it in its toilet or wherever place it needs to be, and gotten rid of. Because if you don't, you're just kind of whitewashing it. You can't just put a little bit of, you know, non stinkum on it, you know, and think that it's going to smell pretty. It doesn't work that way. Because perfume on poop is still poop. It may smell pretty, but it's still poop. And it's still going to stink eventually. So you really can't put you know, your own ideas into Christianity. You have to take what God says and accept that He is the absolute authority when it comes to knowing what people do, what religion does, what man does, and what Jesus said. Because as long as we stick with what Jesus said, you cannot misinterpret Jesus. He was blunt and to the point. Watch what happens when people try to misinterpret Jesus. Everyone knows that's not what he said, and they know better. So be mindful of that when you're considering Tozer and teaching and looking at your own life. Be more about, you know, maybe understanding where we are, how we are, the way we are, and what we are really about. You know, which, to put it bluntly, most people don't want to be pooper scoopers. They just think that that's disgusting and someone else ought to do it. But you know, if you go and start to scoop up someone else's poop, you might find Jesus there ahead of you. Because after all, he scooped up your poop, didn't he? That's how you got saved.